Welcome back. A while ago when I made a list of the things that I had learned since I began playing chess again a year and a half ago, one thing I forgot to mention was is called the rule of the square. And as I was studying this week going through the new endgame book that I bought, it mentioned it and I was pleasantly surprised that, hey, this is something that I actually know. And, uh, or at least <laughs> I partially know it. So I'm gonna explain what I do know here in case it helps anybody else. Um, I think I learned this from a chess.com lesson or possibly a video on YouTube. But the idea is in an end game, when you have a passed pawn, an enemy king is the only piece that can stop it. If the king can enter what's called the square of the pawn before the pawn can move forward, uh, then the, the king can capture that pawn. So the question in the book is in this position with white to move, can this pawn promote without the assistance of the white king? And the answer is yes, and you can determine that quickly without counting. Now what I did was count the squares first, but then I remembered the rule of the square. So the idea is, of course, uh, on this first move, the pawn moves twice, uh, two squares instead of one. Now if you just move one, then it can't make it in time. But when the pawn moves two squares, which it will do because it's white's turn, this king now cannot enter what's called the square of the pawn. And the square of the pawn is if you draw a diagonal from the pawn toward the enemy king, that's the other corner of the square. And this is the square of the pawn. And the king, the black king, cannot enter that square on its next move. It can get close, but then the pawn moves again, and now the square is smaller. And the enemy king, again, cannot enter that square on its next move. So this pawn will promote before the king gets there. And it's in this case, it's gonna promote with check. And white wins the game, uh, unless they do something <laughs> really blunderish. Okay, but back to the starting position uh, here. If it's black to move, it's a different story. Okay, if it's black's turn, black moves forward. And then when the pawn promotes, the enemy king can enter the square of the pawn before the pawn can move again. And in this case, black's king will get there in time. It doesn't matter whether it goes that way or this way. But now when the pawn promotes, the black king captures. And in fact, if we back up to the first move, if it's black's move, it doesn't matter if white brings the king, it can still be a draw because this black king can get here before the king can get there. Now, if white's king were closer, perhaps it would be a different story. Perhaps uh, white's king can get in front of the pawn first and shoulder black's king away, and it's, it's different. But in this case, with the white king so far away, the white king can't help the white pawn, and the black king is gonna get in front of this pawn before the white king can get there to help. Or as you saw, if we just move the pawn, black's king will get there in time to stop it. So that's the rule of the square. And just to be clear, it, that applies no matter where the passed pawn is or where the kings are. So in this situation, if we've, I don't know, just traded off our last piece here, uh, or our, there, it's white to move, um, black's king is already in the square of the pawn because no matter where you draw the diagonal from here, black's king's already inside that square and is going to be in front of this pawn. And white's gonna have to be very careful, probably end up in a draw. In this case, uh, white would definitely want to get the king in front of the pawn first to uh, keep the black king from getting there. So if it's white to move, for example, we would want to be something like this, where we can continue uh, pressuring this king back as we bring the pawn up from behind. And if the king ever moves to the side, we can go to the other side and thus protect the squares that the pawn needs to advance through. But usually where the rule of the square comes into play, where a players think of it is in a more advanced position. The first position I gave with the pawn down here, the king here, and the other king here uh, is highly unusual, much more likely to be encountered in an actual end game is a position in which the pawn is already partially down the board, uh, the kings have already moved more than once due to it being an end game, and at least one of these kings has recently cleared off the last piece of the board, or the pawn has. But in this case, with white to move, again, we draw the square, we can know before we move it 
that the black king cannot catch this pawn. And with black to move, we know that the king can enter the square of the pawn before the pawn moves. And so we would actually we would absolutely have to bring our king in this case to try to uh, keep the black king out of the way. Because here this is the square, and once the pawn moves, the square is now here, and black's king cannot get in there. Um, so anyway, it's a good thing to keep in mind when you're getting into end games that drawing the diagonal toward the king from the past pawn uh, gives the other borders of the square. And if you draw the diagonal the other way, it doesn't make any sense. Because you need to know, can the king get there before the pawn moves again? And no, it cannot. Because now the square is going to shrink even further, and the king cannot get there. Uh, you could also think of it as the diagonal of the pawn. As long as you remember to draw it toward the king, to back up to this position, draw the diagonal toward the enemy king, assuming the en enemy king is in front. If the enemy king is behind, it doesn't matter. I, obviously, it can't catch because it can move the same number of squares per turn that a pawn can, and it's never going to catch it. Um, but if the enemy king is in front and there's no other pieces on the board, this matters. Now, if there are other pieces or pawns on the board, there's other stories. If there's a black pawn over here, for example, we have a pawn race and different things come into consideration. Uh, if we have a you know an enemy piece over here or someplace a you know a rook a bishop a knight that also comes into play if there's a knight down here can the knight catch that pawn before the pawn gets there and those sort of things but with just the pawn and the king it's the square that counts and again here with black to move black enters the square on time because the square is here whoops the square is here which you find by drawing the diagonal toward the enemy king. But with white to move, the square already has shrunk, and the king cannot get there in time. I hope that helps. I'm saying this out loud to make sure that I know it and understand it. Thank you for watching.